My name is Christian von Königsegg. I'm 40 years old and for half of my life I've been on the quest to be a leader in the hypercar industry, utilizing Swedish design combined with visionary technical solutions. So the one-to-one -one engine is, uh, is based on our Agera R engine, so we always kind of work in steps. It's, uh, it's an iterative process where we keep on pushing the boundaries and fine-tuning and finding solutions. So in order to get the power at an even higher level than what we have in the Agera R, we have uh, uh, reported the cylinder heads, we have uh, changed valves, springs, retainers, camshafts, camshaft drive, um, injectors, fuel pumps, fuel system, uh, turbos, uh, partially the exhaust system. Those are basically the physical changes to the engine. And then there's a lot of uh, software tuning to get it run properly. Uh, given all these changes, we've been able to raise the RPM level and thereby we can get, and given that we have different camshafts, we have more power higher up in the RPM range. The good thing about that is we're not putting more strain uh, on or, or more torque into the parts or the block because we're getting the power at a higher RPM level. So that means uh, we don't have to reinforce the rest of the engine. We just had to make all the parts light enough in the valve train and drive train to take the higher RPM. Um, so yeah, those are the physical changes. The engines are completely built here uh, from scratch and are unique to us. So, so in the, the one-to-one -one engine, the first prototype one-to-one -one engine we've been working on for three, four months, specking up, simulating, assembling, checking flowing uh, ports, checking that uh, we have the right uh, compression ratio for the, for the need and uh, we just started running the engine a few days ago on the dyno and it will be on the dyno for a few days and then it will go into the test car and then we will start running another one-to-one -one engine on the dyno, further refining it to get that program also into the uh, first test car. We try to keep it lean, minimalistic, only put in exactly what we need to get the job done and to get the performance we need or the drivability or the comfort or whatever. I think all these hybrids coming out now is an answer to trends and uh, ideas uh, connected maybe also to some of the manufacturers more normal cars to market them. And it's really tough with today's uh, hybrid technology to compete with a non-hybrid car that is optimized because they become heavy and complex and dual systems uh, gets involved and that has to work together. You can get a good result, that's proven, but I don't think you can get as good result as doing a car without those systems today. Maybe at a point in time in the future these systems will be optimized, but that's not what we see is happening right now. Also, I think when you get better batteries and better electric motors that are in these hybrid cars, you will be better off making an electric car than a hybrid car. And uh, while the, uh, let's say, normal combustion engine is developing also still rapidly, uh, it will be better off in many ways without a complex hybrid system by itself. So it's kind of avoiding trying to mix oil and vinegar basically from my point of view and, and I think we uh, we're already proving and we will continue to prove uh, that it is in many ways better not to do it. <laughs> 